Big Mac. Coming back to work has been pretty tough. I've just been in meeting after meeting after meeting. Eat. And for some reason, everyone seems to be very confrontational this week. I don't know if the planets are out of line or what's going on, but everyone seems to be in a bad mood. Except for him. <laughs> I take Jonah to school every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And it's always an insane rush. Why am I picking up Megan's bag? Here it is. Hey dogs. Traffic. 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 There's lots of traffic. Yeah. Every day I drop Jonah off, he absolutely loses it. Who knows why? today to talk a little bit about <clears throat> Clockwork Media. Obviously we've taken up a lot of my time and I spend a lot of time here at the office and um, for those of you who don't know, this guy is Nick Simmons, uh, he's my business partner. We started Clockwork together. So I wanted to tell the story quickly about how Clockwork actually came to be. Oh thank you Jen. Yeah, I'm lunch. Yeah, we're gonna go all the way back. Yeah, let's go back. So Nick and I used to play in bands together. Nick was in a band called Cinnable Diaries. This is the point at which I'm gonna put your face up and so everyone can see what you look like when you're 19. Radical. Yeah. I used to play in a band at that time called Dead City Centers. We used to play a lot of shows together and that's how we met and we had a drunk conversation at a place called Rats in Melbourne, which is a really seedy bar. And we basically decided to start a band together and then we started Don't Show Fire, which I was in for like seven years and you were in for like three years. And we toured the country and played a bunch of shows. And then Nick got me my first job. Mm -hmm. So Nick started as a journalist at my broadband, uh, which is a really, really popular technology website. He was the first journalist there. I knew nothing about technology. He got me an interview somehow and I got the job um, as a journalist there and we worked together for like two years and then I left. So I went on my own and started as a freelance writer under the name Clockwork Media, which I found off of a Stanley Kubrick Clockwork Orange post that was hanging in my lounge. And I tried to convince him for about six months, right, to join Clockwork. Big included. Begged him on Skype every day. I was just like, come over to the dark side, you can do this, we can mm -hmm. do this. In September 2011, he joined us, or joined me, and it was literally just the two of us sitting in our bedrooms in our underwear. I mean, I was, I was actually wearing pajama pants most of the time. So I was in my underwear. That's cool. We literally just did any work that we could find. We got our first two clients from Nick. They were gaming clients. Yeah, we just started building our business of two people. Correct. From our bedrooms. Over That's time. we did. Martin's here, by the way. Hey, Martin. Hey, where were we? Filming. Yeah, it's filming. Cool. So, I have a lot of coffee. I'm really like... Pretty hot up. So one of the reasons why I wanted to do this vlog today was because I don't know if you knew that knew this, but we have I think we've just hired our fiftieth person. Wow, that's crazy. So in three years we've built it into a fifty person agency, which is pretty cool. It's been a really crazy journey and um, it's just a really gratifying thing. So as you know, we're busy putting together a London office at the moment, which is going really, really well, which is the next step. And some people have asked us or asked me, how big do we want Clockwork to be in South Africa? How big do we want it to be? Um, I don't think it would in terms of a number goal, but I know that you want to take over the world. So that's a million. Um, hey, Chris. Chris is just over there laughing at us. I should pan to Chris. That would be cool. Chris was yeah, like, I should just... Uh, here's Chris over there. He thinks he's, thinks he's a smart house. What would you say is the hardest thing about running Clockwork? Hardest thing? Oh, I feel like we go through times where certain things are fairly, they seem easy and other things seem hard and then they flip around. You know, things can go really well for a while and then all of a sudden you can have a week or two of sort of things falling apart. So those times are really difficult uh, when you sort of get off track and have to steer back. 
back to where you need to be. What do you think the hardest thing about it is? When your company gets to the size that Clockwork is, and it's not even a big company, but it's big to us, um, you kind of have to intentionally forget about the responsibility associated with paying everyone every month. I find that when I actually sit down and think about how much money we have to pay and how many people we have to pay and how many families we actually have to support, I become incredibly anxious. Freak out. You have to kind of suspend your anxiety in order to run a business like this. So, we bought a new toy to start playing with on a new project that we're launching. Yes. Let me show you. We bought a drone. So I'm going to unwrap this baby and play with it for this vlog and for our super secret project for Clockwork which is really not that secret at all now thanks to Nick. I feel like I just got a, like a remote controlled car for Christmas. That's pretty action. That's pretty much what I, I just got. That's what See that? You see that? That's a bad thing. So I'm feeling quite sorry for myself because the drone that we bought doesn't work. It's such a letdown to buy something expected to work out of the box and it just doesn't. The battery's just not booting up so I guess we're going to have to take it back tomorrow and get a new one. I wanted to finish this vlog with some drone footage um, or me crashing it but we're going to have to wait for tomorrow. Sorry. Wait a minute. This isn't my world. Disappoint!